Vinny Tortorich here. Hey, man, if you're a fan of Vizzy, you might be a fan of me, too. I'm the guy that gets people to lose a lot of weight. I have something free for you guys. This is no clickbait. Just go to VinnyTortorich.com, and there's a big banner. It's a free PDF, How to Lose Weight. It's an intro guide to NSNG at VinnyTortorich.com. Go check it out exclusively for anyone who listens to Izzy Presley. Thank you. RockstarLeatherworks.com is your home for badass rock and roll gear. Featuring 100% handmade leather bands, watches, cuffs, bracelets, and more, Rockstar Leatherworks has something for everybody. Whether you are going to the show or you are in it, you can find something to fit your needs. Choose from a variety of designs or create your own masterpiece. Their bands and watches are second to none. They also ship internationally. Who needs a stage to be a rock star? Check out rockstarleatherworks.com. Hey, ladies. Sass Pants Designs will take that band shirt that everyone has and make it your own in a flattering, sassy, and simple way. There are one-of-a-kind tank tops, halter tops, lace-up tees, and tube top dresses already in stock. Check out the online store at sasspantsrocks.com and like Sass Pants Designs on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for special offers and custom orders. Use the code IZZY25 for 25% off of your entire order at sasspantsrocks.com. That's sasspantsrocks.com. Let Sass Pants make you the envy of the party. Replay Guitar Exchange is your premier independent guitar store. Being independent is good. With all the major brands, including new, vintage, and pre-owned, you can find the guitar, bass, amp, or accessory you are dreaming of. From vintage to the newest models, Replay Guitar Exchange can help you find that perfect piece. They have industry veteran expert staff, all players like you, down to the owner. You aren't just getting a great guitar, you're getting the Replay difference. Find them online at ReplayGuitar.com and find your dream guitar today. Hi, this is Bobby Brown and welcome to another fucking podcast. My liver's all twisted up. But you know what I did? I loaded up with alcohol. More specifically, vodka, whiskey, beer, tequila, more beer, more vodka, more whiskey, and more beer. Who wants an orange whip? Orange whip? Orange whip? Three orange whips. So you're bored, are you? I've come here to break your monotony. Let me have my piece, because I'm shooting with this one, folks. I don't care, man. The unscripted, uncensored, loose cannon of commentary. Why did you say that? Why? Why? Can you come out with stink like that? Poop. Your poop mouth. Get out of your mouth. See, son? Old legends never die. They just lose weight. Like a legend and an out-of-work bum look a lot alike, Daddy. I've got a midget friend, an albino friend, and another friend who thinks Lord of the Rings is real. Together we call ourselves the Unfuckables. Which hunt is in? Let the fun begin! Body touch! You got you an asshole, man. <laughs> I've never heard of Van Halen. Hello, Hollywood. Hello, world. Hello, my loyal minions. It is good to see you, and as always, good to be seen. My name is Izzy Presley, coming to you live from beautiful downtown Burbank. And today we are talking Kevin Smith movies, the View Askew Review, I'm kind of calling it. I'm going to get to all that in a second. Make sure you guys hit up all the social media at Real Lizzie Presley all the way across the board Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And of course, the show page, which is called Another Effin' Podcast. You can buy shirts. Uh, if you're watching the video, the shirt that I'm wearing, there is a very limited quantity of these, quantity of these left. The uh, eBay link is in the, uh, in the description. Click on that. Um, I'll have the, the link for the early Ray, Earl, early Ray uh, cherry pie video, apple pie, I'm sorry, video in there as well, if you guys have not seen that. Um, what else do we got? Oh, yeah, show news. Um, I am leaving for Minnesota tomorrow. Oh, no, not tomorrow, on the 1st. And so I'm going to be gone for two shows. So the next two weeks, there probably will be no show unless I do something just on, uh, just on YouTube for uh for the show maybe we'll do some fun stuff there uh make sure you guys do subscribe and you will be able to see my final plea to kevin smith as you guys know that follow me on twitter um i have been begging him every day to cast me in twilight of the mall rats and uh i i let's just say i called in a friend we'll leave it at that and um 
They're, the video is probably about five minutes long, four and a half minutes of me doing a Cactus Jack type promo. And uh, then the friend pops in. And then, um, then, yeah. And also, to prove to Kevin that I will do anything to get in these movies, I have in front of me Vegemite that I have never tried. It is unopened. It got sent to me by listener Lori Nickel. And uh, we will be having a Vegemite chippy sandwich. At least taking one bite of it. So we'll see how that goes. And you can get my immediate response live on the air. So bring it in on the show. He's been here before. You know him from the band Early Ray. His name is Ray and Belcher. Welcome back. What's happening? And uh, first timer, Earl Bickle, who I know from the Monsters of Rock Cruise and I worked with on Monsters of Rock Radio when I was on there, um, on, on the Dash Radio Network doing mornings. Um, Earl, has, uh, Earl has a history with the uh with well with clerks too and we're gonna get into all that as well welcome earl thank you welcome thank you um so uh let let's start with this how does you uh, i think what we want to do so the first half of the movie the first half of the show we'll let's we'll just talk about the movies we'll concentrate on um the jane silent bob movies clerks small rats clerks Two, chasing amy dogma um I suppose we can talk about uh, Jersey Girl for for a second, um, and uh, you know the, the the latest Jay and Silent Bob movie. I don't know if you guys saw that one or not. Yeah, um, that just came out. Um, but uh, Earl, why don't you tell us uh, your history with this? Uh, why you're uh, why we why we uh, why we brought you into the show? Well, just in general. I mean, I've been a Kevin Smith fan literally since the beginning when it was out on videotape a friend of mine gave it to me he said you got to watch it you're a comic book fan you're gonna love this shit mm -hmm. so i watched it fell in love with it and next thing you know i'm finding out that his second film all rats is going to be in the theater in a couple of weeks so i went to see that first viewing and all that and again loved it loved the humor and all that and that's it started building and building and saw every movie after that. And uh, later on, a friend of mine was on a uh, board called v uh, VSQ, which is a production company. And he has a fan board, um, or did, I should say. It's not there anymore. And I joined in uh, just to see what it was all about. And I was amongst raving Kevin Smith fans. And I fit right in. And since then, um, until the board, the official board ended, I was part of it almost daily, sometimes almost hourly. And there was at times when, like, for example, when I saw Clerks 2, um, in a sneak preview, uh, Kevin actually said, how was it? Did you like it? How much laughter was there? You know, just, he was really worried about it. And I gave him a glowing review. I mean, it was a fantastic film. And there was a whole bunch of other stuff too that he really did, like uh, he had his uh, 37th birthday, yes, in a row. And, and outside Red Bank at a hotel, and only 240s uh, were allowed to come, and I was one of them. And so we got the party down with Kevin Smith, his wife, and even his little girl at the time, uh, yeah. Holly. And that was a hell of a time. I mean, I mean, you got the epic fan base plus who you're there for. You know? Right, right. And it was like he made it into a prom for his oh, 13th wow. birthday. And that's why I like you saw that one picture of me, Izzy. I was in a tux and everything else. And I mean, it was just like it was very formal and all that. Halfway through, people were taking their shit off. But uh, but it was just like you had ice cream and we had dinner. I mean, you name it. It was a hell of a party. And uh, but it's, it's just one of those that as a fan of Kevin Smith, he is like one of those storytellers that really get into a certain audience. Mm -hmm. And it works. It's like yeah. a niche thing, but at the same time, it works for more than that. I'm I love not. it. I love it. Uh, oh, going to the uh, the chat room really quick. Uh, Jeff Jacobus in the house says, fuck yes, bitches, and what's up, Earl? And uh, Joe Regan in the house, and a huge uh, thank you to Joe. Joe is the reason I was able to call in a friend. Um, Joe's Joe helped facilitate that so joe thank you so much i uh i owe a debt of gratitude to you and i will see you in a week 
or so when I come back home. So, um, I mean, we should, we should start at the beginning. We should start at Clerks. Uh, first time you guys saw it, uh, initial thoughts. I saw Clerks after Clerks 2. Really? And yeah. I, the, my first Kevin Smith movie. And I belong to that same board towards the end of it. But uh, Clerks 2, I got taken by a friend, a friend of mine, jo Joanna, who lives in England, who came over to visit. She's like, you got to see the Kevin Smith movies. You're going to love them. And went to Clerks 2. And so I went back and watched Clerks. And I got to be honest, the first couple of times I watched it, I was I just thought Clerks 2 was so much better. Mm -hmm. But the, the older I get, the more I get into film and everything, I realize just how genius that movie really right. was. Right. Yeah, I mean, like for me, it, I saw, obviously I saw it because that was the first one and I saw it, you know, when it, not right right when it came out, but, you know, when it started catching catching a wave of uh, of dorks like us, you know, re really enjoying it. And uh, it took me a couple times to to really get it, you know, to really, really get it. And, you know, once I got it, I got it. You know, it's it's got, right. it, it, the thing that I love about Kevin's movies is, and it, obviously it started in the first one, you know, the, the Star Wars references. It's just random, random references. And the, I mean, the dialogue, it's all about the fucking dialogue in Kevin's movies. And then that's, you know, one thing that I absolutely love about him, you know, and the fact that it was in black and white and, you know, you know, being somebody that, you know, I worked at a, you know, I worked at Target and I worked at Shopco and, you know, working in a car wash and dealing with customers and all that shit. It's something that really just, you know, fucking, it, it just caught me because we've all been there. You know, when I worked right. at the car wash, I, you know, I worked in the store for a little while. So I dealt with all of that shit and it, yeah, it just absolutely grabbed me. Yeah, I think clerk. I think clerks. A lot of us had that. I don't get it, but I want to get it. So right. I'm gonna give it another. I want to give it another try because I really want to get this. And then mm -hmm. after once the once the light bulb goes off, you're either a fan or you're not. You know, I've never right. really. I really really never met anybody who goes. Eh, I kind of like him. Either people love his stuff or they don't seem to like it at all. <laughs> He's got a really hard. Yeah, part. yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Earl. Um, it's, it, when, like, it's like when I saw it, if, to me, it felt at first like an artsy fartsy film, you know, black and white. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. This, you know, it just the camera direction was weird and all that. But then I just started really getting into it as, in, as a fan. And like, I've had those discussions about, you know, are those stormtroopers really workers or, you know, and blowing up the Death Star, you know, that yeah, yeah. or any, any other type geeky type stuff. And I'm just like looking at this, kept going, I like this. And then I watched it a second time again. I'm like going, yeah, this works. This works really well. I mean, and then hearing and how he made it, you mm -hmm. know, like he spent like $35,000 in credit cards and stuff like that mm -hmm. to make this film. And how big it became just poof, just like that, it seemed like. Wait, wasn't, just, it wasn't it 27, 600 or something? I'm just being a nerd. Yeah, I think it was closer to twenty five, not thirty five. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, low budget, somebody look. Away. Somebody look that up on the on the uh, on the chat room. If, <laughs> only, if only there was this device. My inner nerd says twenty seven six. I thought it was twenty five. Uh, Joe has a good point. Uh, soundtracks too. I mean, the, the yeah. soundtrack for the the first Clerks movie was unbelievable. You know, yeah. and especially for a, a film that you know was made for twenty five thousand dollars. Or twenty seven six. Or twenty seven six. <laughs> yeah. Actually, let me look that up right now. Hold on. Hey, we're being right. we're being we're being nerds, man. We got to nerd out. It's, I know, I know. But I mean, yeah, you look at the soundtrack. He had Soul Asylum. Uh, wasn't there an Alice in Chains tune on there too? Yeah. Um, hey, Earl, you made twenty seven three. Twenty seven three. So I was three hundred bucks off. I win. The price is right. <laughs> so Earl. So so. Did the original Earl before Miramax picked it up? Did it, did Kevin just put those songs in there anyway, or was that a Miramax? It was a, I believe after it was done, uh, there was no music, no nothing. Okay. And then Miramax added that on because he had uh, obviously the access to licensing and all that. That's right. what I understand. Yeah, gotcha. that that makes sense because uh, looking at the soundtrack, looks like you have uh, the bands are Love Among Freaks, Girls Against Boys, um, Alice in Chains. Uh, Bash Soul and Asylum. Pop, Supernova, The Jesus Lizard, 
Golden Smog, Bad Religion, Stabbing Westward. I forgot that they were on that. Uh, Corrosion of Conformity. Holy what? shit. Yeah. What? Corrosion? It, what's uh, song's COC called song? Big Problems. Um, a band called Seaweed and Soul Asylum. Wow. That's a deep, that's a good soundtrack. Dude, that's a killer. And that, you know, look, it, he's, he's, Kevin has been known for having great soundtracks. Right. You know, I mean, even the Mallrat soundtrack was fucking great, too. Oh, God. Yeah, that you know? Good. Yeah, that Mallrat soundtrack was awesome. But back to Clerks. Yeah, exactly, exactly. How, how do you guys think that, that film holds up today? I think guys like us get it. And mm -hmm. I think there's a whole, there's a whole, there's going to be a generation of, of pop culture nerds who want to get it because they realize Kevin Smith has created a universe of his own. The View Askew Re Review right, is a right. great title for this. And, and there's going to be people who see this universe at comic cons or at movies or going mm -hmm. to see another movie, but see all of us nerds going into another movie and go, hey, I want to be a part of that crew. That crew. Yeah. And, and, and so there's going to, there's going to be a, a pickup, but I think it's going to take these new fans like us probably a little longer than us for clerks. But once it clicks, the whole show will click on for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Easily. then he moved on to uh, then he moved on to the first Small Rats film, um, and uh, that was filmed in the Eden Prairie Center, uh, you know, right outside of Minneapolis, so in my hometown. Uh, well, St. Cloud, but, you know, driving distance within an hour. Um, I actually, I went down to the Eden Prairie Center and bought the soundtrack at the Music Land there, just so I could say I bought it at the place that they fucking filmed it, you know. Um, nice. I thought, uh, you know, I thought, I thought that was, I always liked Mallrats better than I liked Clerk, Clerks, and I, I don't, not necessarily because it was in color, but um, obviously, you know, he had a bigger budget, and uh, I, I thought the writing was better, and I thought the obviously the acting was a lot better because he brought in, you know, able to bring in some up and coming pros. You know, that's when we found, that's when we saw Jason Lee, that's when we saw Affleck, you know, Shannon Doherty. Um, uh, who's the guy that played the fucking uh, the the cop? Was it the cop or the? Well, there was the father that was played by the Michael father. Rooker. Yes, the father. Yeah, Michael Rooker. Yeah. Um, and then uh, who else was here? Joey Lauren Adams, obviously. Yeah, Joey Lauren Adams. Yep. Yep. And uh, you can't miss, you missed Stan the Man. Stan oh, of Lee. course, Stan Lee. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, but yeah, for me, that when I saw this in the theater, I, it, the theater wasn't packed. Mm -hmm. uh, this was when I was living in Cheyenne, Wyoming. So you're a mess of cowboys anyway. So you, I'm not expecting it to be packed. Right. But. It was actually a good size in there, and people were laughing pretty good. And I'm like, going, this is kind of nice, you know. Yeah. First coming out with clerks, unknown, and then playing at mall rats, and then it's all that same universe, and people are getting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also then, think uh, I also think mall rats is a much more quotable movie to me personally. Um, you know, the chocolate covered pretzels, and <laughs> you know. <laughs> The stink palm and all that shit. <laughs> you know, beating I, up I, the Easter Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> the elevator all, scene. <laughs> all rats, all rats to me was, in my list, I have it as my second favorite Kevin Smith. We'll get, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Don't give away your list until the second okay. half of the show. Okay. Well, I'm a fan of mall rats. I felt like mall rats was what, what was clerks on a budget would have been. It yeah, felt like the yeah. same. Same, same guy made it the same mm -hmm. you know got the same sense of humor the same timing the same everything but with right. the budget but with you know actors he wanted to use in certain roles with the ability to shut down the mall and all that stuff so yeah i thought i thought i thought he hit it out of the park with mall rats mm -hmm. yeah uh, i think one thing that we need to point out too is how the improvement of of jason muse from the first film into into mall rats because apparently from what I heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but um, I think I heard Kevin talking about this, how the studio didn't want Muse in the film because they thought he was terrible. Um, and Muse busted his ass, which, Kevin, I will do as well. Um, <laughs> ah, always fucking plugging for myself. But uh, the, the, apparently the studio didn't want Muse because he was terrible. And Muse, from the story that I, I think I remember Kevin saying, is that Muse literally memorized the entire script. Not just his 
lines. He memorized the entire script and he busted his ass, you know, to, to, yeah. to be better. And I think it really showed. Yeah. Yeah. He was actually supposed to be played. Uh, the character itself that was supposed to be played by Seth Green. Really? Yep. Wow. That kind of shocked me too. When I heard that I went, really? But now he's off doing his own thing, you know, Robot Chicken and all that. But yeah, yeah. But is it that one? It was a surprising when I heard that. But at the same time, if you look at his history, I'm kind of wondering if they looked at his history saying this guy could be trouble. Let's just not put him in there. But then at the, at the end of everything, they realized, you know, it worked out. I will, I will say this just to interject, not to steer off course too much. But if anybody's listening hasn't seen it, Jason Muse made a really good film recently and it just came on. I think it's called uh, God, Earl. Maybe you can help me. What's the movie Jason just put out? It's a really great film. It just came on Amazon, but uh, I thought it was fantastic. So shout out Jason Muse. Give his new movie a chance too. I think it. Uh, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, yeah, I haven't. Uh, let's see here. They're super. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Uh, there's so much in here. Madness and a Method? I think that's it, yeah. Okay. That's it. There was a Jane Silent Bob reboot after that. And yep. there was a whole bunch of TV series. Yeah, I just checked out the Madness and the Method. And I thought it, going into it, I'm, you know, I didn't know what to expect. But I, I left it going. That was really oh. good. I thought he did a, people, people who are fans of this universe will like it. So if you're listening and you're a Kevin Smith fan, check out uh, the Method and the Madness. Uh, Joe checking in in the in the chat room. Uh, the 3D painting. Oh my God, the 3D painting! <laughs> I cannot look at one of those and not think, when am I going to see the fucking sailboat? <laughs> it's a schooner. Schooner. Yeah. <laughs> Fair, that's what Farrell says. Fucking schooners. Uh, King Michael checking in says, I thought Mallrats was a shell of clerks. Wow, that's uh, that's an interesting take on it. He said he. He thinks Mallrats had a lame Hollywood bow on the end of the story. I don't disagree. It's just, it's just clerks with a budget. I mean, it's, I don't think he's yeah. disagreeing with what I said. It's just, it's clerks. It's a Hollywood version of clerks. But I personally liked it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't dislike it. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, for me, for me, it really touched because I'm a comic book fan. I mean, if I didn't right. have my thing behind me, you see sacks upon sacks of short boxes behind me. Um, but the I could see that, but there were so many other things too visually that made, in my opinion, the film better than Clerks. But obviously then, Clerks was in a convenience store. So, and now the convenience store is now a mall. But I could see yeah. that as that being kind of, but it's a, Clerks like you were saying, Clerks with a budget. Yeah, I, I guess so I, I can disagree with that. I, yeah, I don't disagree with what he's saying. I just think he, I just, he did, he liked Clerks better. You know, I don't, you know, I don't hate on that. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't, look, I can't, that, that's, this is the beauty thing about these discussion is nobody's right. Well, except for me. Um, <laughs> you know, that we, we can all have our, our opinions about this. It's like, it's like definitely, it, it's, it goes back to the whole kiss geekdom. You know, I, I caught so much shit on Twitter for saying that kiss unmasked was the uh, Taco Bell uh, of kiss <laughs> records. You know, I remember that. saying you that, it yeah, it's like it, it, you, some things look appetizing and then you try it and you think it's not bad. Then you realize it's still fucking Taco Bell. And that's what the Kiss Unmasked record was. And I caught hell for that. But that's the beauty part of it. It's like that everybody has their opinions. And I wasn't making fun of Unmasked. I don't hate the record. It's just it's not a great Kiss record. You know, but these are. But for, for people that don't know what a group of nerds talking about Kevin Smith movie sounds like, this is what it sounds like. You're yep. going to have people with just different people. People love different things about it, but we all love the same thing. And uh, so we kind of have a little community. And, you know, that was a great thing about the Kevin Smith board. You know, like I said, I wasn't there since day one, but I was there towards the end. It seemed like a real community. And um, and it still is. So people have different opinions. I personally think Mallrats was Clerks with a Hollywood version of Clerks. I just, I did, I liked it a little better. You know, you'll feel. But that's second on my list. I already gave that away. All right. But um, speaking of Mallrats, Mallrats two, uh, potentially starring Izzy Presley. 
<laughs> listen, listen, everybody listening right now, do not get off the line to check out who, who's got what celebrity endorsements, because I can tell you the celebrity endorsement you're going to want to hear tonight is for Izzy Presley for Mallrats 2. If yes, you and uh, it is uh, something that will fit into all of our nerddom. Um, I'm not even going to give away the, uh, the, the clickbait line that I threw out on Twitter last night. Um, but uh, it, it, you guys will enjoy it. Like I said, it's the first half is me doing a Cactus Jack type promo and then cutting, going out of character and introduce it, 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 just, it. Just wait. We're going to play the audio. You'll hear the audio live tonight right here on another fucking podcast. But feel free to tweet at that Kevin Smith and say, you know what? You should cast Izzy in Twilight of the Mall Rats. So, anyways, um, but yeah, I mean, I like, like I said, I, I, I really enjoyed Mall Rats. I, I think I did see that in the theater, if I remember correctly, or no, maybe not. Maybe it was out. No, I think I did see it in the theater. It was so fucking long ago, and I've drank so much and burned so many brain cells. <laughs> By the way, I got a little uh, Easter egg uh, trivia in here. I didn't even know this. Oh, nice. When Silent Bob is placing the tape of Shannon's sexual encounter with Trisha into the VCR, the crossed out title is Woody Woodpecker. Oh. Really? <laughs> it's yeah. little, little stuff like that. I always loved what Kevin Yeah. Did. I'm like, I went to Pet Store. It was called Gerbils, Gerbils, Gerbils. And then like you see it. Yeah, got it. And then there was one, uh, a, the one that always stuck, stuck in my mind was the carpet store that was named Rug Munchers. Yep. Yep. That, dude, and, that reminds me of, uh, so in, in West Hollywood, there's a waxing place called uh, Munchbox. Santa Monica Boulevard. I know yep. exactly where you're yep. yep, exactly, exactly. Um, oh, yeah, and then, you know, we, we went to, when I did, went to movies, when they had to pop up here, which is going to be opening at Red Bank now too. Um, if you are on the East coast, get up there and, and do it. It's, it's definitely worth the money. You know, it sounds expensive at first, but it's like, it's, it's the experience and being dorks, you know, you'll love it. You just fucking love it. And I'm not going to lie that fucking, uh, that, uh, that, that cow tipper was probably one of the best burgers I've ever had in my life. Definitely. Well, I don't, definitely. I don't know. I don't know if this is public knowledge, but I was just at the uh, quick stop last week and the second half of the building had a ton of ads on it for a new Smod Castle for a podcast studio. So I don't know if that's just advertising what they're doing or if they're turning that into because it's shut down. So I, I, I couldn't really read, but it said coming soon. So I assumed it was in the same, the, they're going to turn half of the quick stop into a podcast place. That's what huh. it, that's what last Monday. Yeah, I'll send you some pictures later, Izzy, and let you see them. And, uh, I'll I send them to as well, Earl. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, Smodcast was, was his baby for a long time, even when yeah. on the board. I mean, he did it before people were really podcasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, he was one of the first guys. Yeah. I think he had, didn't he have Mark Maron's podcast like before anybody, and then Mark Maron went on his own? I think, uh, I think I he gave Mark Maron – I think he on the uh, network – he had the Mark Marin show for a little while, or one of those heavyweight guys like that. He discovered him, and you know, he you don't ever even hear about that. So I think I think he was kind of ahead of his time. I used to enjoy going to see the improv shows on Friday. It was a uh, it was him and Ralph Garman, the Hollywood Babylon shows. Yep. I I I personally like some of his DVDs where he just tells stories better than some of the movies. To be honest. Oh, oh I mean, my yeah, like uh, the evening with Kevin Smith is fucking yeah. gold. That Prince yeah. story might be one of the yeah. best stories of. He, and that's the thing about Kevin that I love um, is he is such a great storyteller. You know. Speaking of. <laughs> J Lo. <laughs> oh yes, yes. We'll 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 we'll, we'll touch on Jersey Girl in, in a little bit. So you can oh, this has that. nothing to do with you know, with the Jersey Girl. Well, okay. Well, I mean, since Affleck, this was actually had, he was this is actually one of his uh, live things that he did. Okay. Well, yeah. Tell the story. This tell is story. actually on. Though this was actually taken out, but this was part of the three sold out the three evening one, the third one, and it was actually done before right before his thirty seventh birthday in Red Bank, which is really cool. But anyways, in the very beginning, he was talking about, you know, Ben Affleck and all that. And he mentioned that about and how J-Lo came over. And I guess they were in a fight and she's in tears and all that. And um, 
he uh, went to get, you know, a tissue or whatever, and he didn't have any tissue, so he took the roll of toilet paper off that was in the bathroom right by and gave it to her, J-Lo, and all that. And they're talking and all that, and she's getting better, you know, just, you know, you know how it is with her. Yeah, yeah. They get overreact and all that. And she's like, well, I got to use the bathroom, and then, then I have to leave, or something to, similar to that. She goes into the bathroom. About 10 minutes later, she's like, okay, I got to go. I'll see you later, Kevin, and gone. He realizes that the toilet paper was still on the table. And when he went in there, one of the wash rags was missing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Here, I thought That's you were going to say that they both walked in while you were in there fucking taking a grinder. No. <clears throat> no, but no, is it? Uh, that was it, that was a more of a simplified story. Obviously, Kevin would Kevin was talking more epic about it, but right, right. That's the gist of the story, and it was like going, "Ugh, J Lo." But no, this is one of those things that you know those little things, and those things never make it to the DVD. Mm -hmm. I was reading last night that that three evening was seven hours long, but they only put in about five hours. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Well, I suppose. I mean, you want to you want to have the the best uh the best material on there you know oh yeah and i think wasn't the prince one one of the easter eggs on it on the dvd i think the prince one was an easter egg on the dvd well i know there was well you talked about it on the first dvd and then uh actually a friend of mine that she's on the second dvd actually asked about it and if there was any uh feedback let's say uh about what uh, from the prince compound and i guess because he did sign the nda he was able to talk about it and they forgot to have him sign the nda and they the uh, prince people were not too happy about what he said well i mean <laughs> <laughs> i mean you wonder if he was embellishing or if that was completely fucking true you never know i mean he's a story i don't know you don't I'll know just leave it as that. That was one of those stories, though, where I think it hooked me, people like me. That was one of the first stories I, I'd heard him tell, and it really hooked me because I believed it. It didn't feel like a guy trying to stretch a story out to make you to hook you. It felt like a guy just saying, hey, dude, let me tell you what happened to me. You're not going to believe this shit. I was at Prince's house and blah, 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 blah. And guys like me and, and, and Izzy and the rest of all of us rock and roll metalhead dudes were like, you know, dude, we like Prince. You mean the guy like us got to hang out at his house? Yeah, you know, exactly. So I, 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 th I think Kevin, I think on that one, I'm not saying I, I haven't heard a story or two where I felt like maybe he was reaching, but that one felt like it was just one of the, hey, let me tell you about this kind of story, you know, that I'm sure you get on the Monsters of Rock Cruise probably all, every year, those kind of stories. Yeah, I hear about yeah. those. Izzy. I hear about those. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Joe Regan says, I've seen it and you will all love it. Yes. <laughs> the, the video. That, that will be premiering tonight. Uh, Lori Nickel checking in from Australia, saying hello all and uh, I got to play it for him. There you go. Fucking Ward. Jeffro Lee Roth. I want that burger. I love sluts and burgers. So do I. And he also says, what <laughs> J-Lo wash rags or junk? That's hot. I'd eat it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, third film. Something totally different. Going down the uh, going down the drama train with a lot of uh, but still a lot of great funny moments in it. Chasing Amy, um, I know I did see this one in the theater. I think I saw it in the theater twice. I thought this was a great great film. You know, completely different, you know, than the first two. Uh, tackling, you know, let you know tackling gay issues and uh, I, I thought. Jason Lee was outstanding in this fucking movie. Affleck was fucking great too. Um, great story, you know, appeases the comic book nerds. Um, again, it's great hockey references in there, you know, with NHL 93 fucking rules. Um, your thoughts. This was a really interesting one. Like you said, it was a lot more drama than his past two. And it was during actually during this time when it was the uh, LGBT type, fighting going on for rights and stuff like that and this one he basically you know he i wouldn't say i made a statement but it's just like he said they're just like us 
right and, you know especially with the storyline and how you know the girl that he loves is a lesbian yep and i know that yeah i'm gonna say that, that happened to me once and it was like you know you feel heartbroken you're like no no <laughs> and, then <laughs> and then you're like wait a minute can i watch no um <laughs> 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 but no it's just you know it was it was just one of those that it, i it, it was there was a lot of um ups and downs that i would almost say i mean it's mm -hmm. just like you know especially toward the end when he was at talking about maybe doing a threesome i mean yeah <coughs> yeah right yeah. Uh, joe yeah. says finger cuffs <laughs> 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 that never gets old um <laughs> But, you know, that movie also, um, it also, it, it talks about that fantasy that we as straight men always have of turning the hot lesbian girl straight. I agree with that. I, Chase and Amy, it was, to me, there's still, there's still more to that story Kevin ever, hasn't ever told us. I think a lot of it was kind of cut out. I think it was a little bit deeper of a story. I think he was trying to make a movie that he'd be chasing for the rest of his life. Yeah. And that's why, that's why he named it Chase and Amy and he built it into the script because he knew he was reaching as far as he could probably possibly reach within the Hollywood system at the time. Cause he was definitely going against the grain. He wasn't playing it safe mm -hmm. with that movie. Yeah. So, yeah. and he's been consistent with that, you know, how he's, how he's kind of handled those kind of stories throughout his career so mm -hmm. he's one of the first guys to actually put a movie out that charged with with that kind of content so mm -hmm. it, it, for me personally though it's in the middle of the pack it's not in the top half of my favorites i i do like it but i mm -hmm. I, th I thought it was more of a statement about him than one of my favorite movies personally I, the thing that i love about chasing amy too is this is when you've really uh he, he really starts to um reference the other movies in the movies right. you know you're right. trying you know tying them all together into that that quote-unquote jersey trilogy you know like aren't you guys supposed to be at the fucking mall and uh and kevin's performance um in that dialogue that he had was fucking amazing i mean that was fucking amazing yeah this was is it starting to see how his writing was starting to become more fleshed out Right. And more adult. Yeah. I mean, not just, you know, the body humor or whatever, but right. and how he was just like, I need to be serious about this, especially since it's a serious subject. Mm -hmm. Well, and, he also, and, he, look, he references that too. Um, love those dick and fart jokes. Love them. You know, the, the fanboys. And I think this is, this is a way for him to expand into more of a broader audience while making a statement at the same time. I agree. Yeah, I, I can see that, and I th I think you're right, Izzy. I think I think Kevin really the great. The, the, here's the thing, Kevin. I think is a much better actor than people give him credit for. I but agree. He, he's kind of like Rodney Dangerfield. He he kind of courted himself into the Silent Bob guy. But here's the thing, Kevin would be the last guy to complain about that. But he right. is a better actor than most people give him credit for. I think I th I right. think he did a good job in that. Yeah, I well, agree and that, that. you know, like you said, it's like he people are always going to look at him and go, "It's the Bob, it, it's Silent Bob." And he, right. He could star. I mean, he could star in somebody else's film, but it, it, you'll be looking at it and go, "It's fucking Silent Bob." He mm -hmm. did. What was that movie that he was a fly fisherman in? I can't remember that movie title. Oh, but he was I don't know. He, um, he was, um, yeah, I know who you're talking about. But 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 he actually did a good job. I thought he was funny and, and li really likable in it. But I just kept thinking Jay and Silent Bob the whole time. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah, absolutely. First half of the show brought to you by Beater Amplification. That's two E's, BeaterAmplification.com. Hit them up on Facebook. Hand-wired, hand-built, amazing fucking amplifiers. Three channels, 100 watts of testicular fortitude. Pull two tubes, you got yourself a 50. They are working now on uh, rack-mountable models. If you don't want to lug around a big 100-watt fucking beast like I got sitting right behind me. Um, these things are so fucking killer that, that one I got behind me is a prototype. The Izzy Presley TCB one will be out soon. Oh my God. Old school Metallica tone, old school ACDC tune tone, and that old school Fender clean tone. It is absolutely amazing. Check it out. 
Beater Amplification.com and give them a like on Facebook as well. And our good friends over at Mackie, M-A-C-K-I-E. You want to get into podcasting, you want to get into home recording, hit up Mackie, Mackie.com. Check out the studio bundles, a very affordable and easy way to get into it. So hit them up, Mackie, Mackie.com. Um, so we move on from chasing Amy, and this is when he really made a statement. Uh, big splash. Jump, big splash, jumping down uh, the religious – the religious gimmick with uh, fucking dogma. Um, and uh, one of my favorite stories about this is people are protesting this movie all over it. He actually went to one of the protests and pretend to be one of the protesters. <laughs> and it was on TV. Yeah, it was on TV. That, I, I like the story about the movie personally in my list of Kevin Smith's movies better than the movie. It just I, I, coming off of the last, the, that lineup, it, it a lot of people love it. It's it's a it's a love it or hate it in this universe. I didn't hate it, but it wasn't one of my favorites. I, but I love the story of the movie. Right. But when Kevin talks, talks about promoting the film and how he felt about it and convicted he was, and he went mm-hmm. and protested, that was one of the first stories I'd heard about him, like about him, that really made me kind of dig him. You know, I was just like, he is one of us. He is a guy that goofs on himself and doesn't give a damn. So yeah, dogma dogma for me. I, I, maybe I need to give it another shot, but it was I think on the left. I think you do. And and look, I mean, Dogma was ninety nine, so this was after. So that, yeah, because I think uh, wasn't uh, Goodwill Hunting ninety seven, ninety eight, something like that. So was it? This was after Goodwill Hunting, I believe. Right. Yeah, because he got the two big gets in Hollywood at the time, but you yeah, know, they kind of owed him. They owed him one, so they did it. Yeah, and yeah. I, I thought, you know, they both did a great job in that movie. I, it was great, you know. Um, I, I just love the little shit. And, you know, again, you know, referencing the other movies, Jay and Silent Bob showing up again, and um, the fact that Alana Mor- <laughs> Alanis Morissette was God. Yeah. You know, Carl- George Carlin was outstanding in that film. Yes, he was. This is actually one of my – this would be number two for me, to be, I'll be honest. Obviously, less later, but – Right. This is the film that I looked at because oh, I have yeah. studied religion and I was cracking up laughing. Mm-hmm. I mean, just in seeing like you saw Salma Hayek as a uh, stripper. Yeah. When, when she actually, when she was, um, oh, what's the, uh, her name, uh, what was her character name again? Um, 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 Wasn't it like serendipity or something like that? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then, um, and the shit monster and all that. Yeah. Just <laughs> the little shit things here. monster. <laughs> 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 and it just little things here and there that made made the build up and it, made, it, and it was a religious film to a point but it was just like it seemed like also a personal journey too right well, maybe uh, that was my, maybe that was my disconnect is i i've never my, i don't come from a really heavy religious background and it it de- definitely had some of those tones in it so that mm-hmm. it, it, it hearing you guys talk about it makes me want to watch it later tonight so i'll uh maybe i'll give it another shot but what what you said all makes sense. Maybe that's the disconnect. Is that you know the religious aspect? Yeah. Of it. Well, I think I mean for me, I had ten years of Catholic school, so you know. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I didn't get any of those jokes. I didn't understand any of the, any of those jokes. And so, that and could be a problem. Why you may have not? Because for me, I I mean, I got a lot of the jokes. There'll be a time going. Wait, a minute, was it that or was it this? You know, the little demonology stuff that we're talking about, right? Uh, with uh, Jason and all that. But it was just. I, I, for me, I just loved and how well it was done, how it was set up with Alan, uh, the bad guy from Die Hard. Yeah, Alan, uh, Alan Rickman. Yeah, thank you, Alan, Alan Rickman. Rickman. Joe, I Joe thought he, made, he played the perfect angel. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was, he was just like, you know, and then and just how he, she was just the guide, you know. Yeah. And, just, and how point blank he was. And then when he and uh, the actress had a – thing going back and forth about why did god do this to me and they're talking about what happened to her ovaries her reproduction and all that and how he was just like trying to be the caring you don't i never thought of alan doing something like that yeah yeah because yeah, i mean, mean he always he, played he, like the bad guy yeah you, know? you think of think of him in die hard yeah you know but that, that it just really made me think about and how kevin pushed the boundaries of with these actors oh, and absolutely. do other things and all that so but yeah, I, this, like I said, this was my fa- uh, second one, favorite one. I mean, I even showed it to my mom, mm-hmm. and my mom's really hard on films. 
I'm like, mom, you're going to enjoy this. Trust me. And you know how moms are? Okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the like, end, she enjoyed it. She's like, I, I'm surprised. <laughs> it's like when I, it's like when I drug my mom to Three Amigos and she fell asleep. <laughs> I did that. The police, I think, Police Academy Five. I did that with my mom. <laughs> well, there's the problem. It was Police Academy Five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it was one of the later ones. Maybe it was four, but it, there okay. was definitely one of the later ones. And we were the only ones in the theater, so I get that joke 100. percent By the uh, way, we're Brandon, quick. Uh, uh, there's a little running a joke that's in some of these movies. If you haven't caught it yet, by here is that you always see Jeff Anderson and Brian O'Halloran in these films. Yeah. And like Brian O'Halloran at the end was the reporter who got killed. Yeah. Jeff Anderson, the, uh, the gun shop owner. The same guys who played clerks. Yeah, yeah. And you see that continually throughout the whole, all yep. of his films. And uh, tell, tell him Steve Dave is in all those films too, I think. Yeah, and actually a lot of the uh, people that work for Kevin actually really do work for Kevin. Yeah, yeah. So, oh and yeah, that's absolutely. why you see him in the films and all that. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brandon, uh, Brandon checking in says snooch to the nooch. Uh, Jeffro Lee Roth, uh, Sturcu, Sturculeus lives. Sturculeus, Sturculeus. Oh, and then the of course the the buddy buddy Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we got introduced to movies. Mm-hmm. I remember when uh, the Iraqi war started and Kevin was pissed that, uh, that soldiers were using Buddy Christ. Really? As to torment the enemy. And he was just like, who do I call? Who do I write to? Da, 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 da. I'm just like, and he was doing this on the board. I'm just going, dude, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he was pissed. And I mean, pissed. Right. I never, I, I don't know what happened afterwards, but yeah, yeah, the Buddy Christ thing. I used to have one around here, but my one of my cats knocked it off and broke it. Oh no, <laughs> that's one of the geeky things that I don't have, which I just realized that I fucking need is a Buddy Christ. And I got a movie. That's right. <laughs> I wasn't able to go back and buy merch to when when uh, when movies was open, but uh, fuck yeah. I, uh, see, Brandon thinks dogma is dog shit. And, you know, like I said, I, I, I disagree, but that's the beauty about these conversations is not everybody's yeah. going to love the same things. Uh, Jeff Roll Lee Roth also, also yeah. says three amigos forever. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> now we move on to what I think what might be my favorite, which is supposed to be the wrap up to all of these movies. Um, it was supposed to end the Jersey, the Jersey thing. And that was Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yep. By bringing everybody back for this film. And uh, I, I remember, I think I did see this in the theater two or three times just because it was so fucking good and so funny. And it was, it was the ultimate dick and fart joke movie. Yeah. That it was, and sheep jokes too. Yep, sheep jokes. Yep. I mean, and I mean, if you look at the cast, other than, um, other than the people from the quote unquote VSQ universe, I mean, you have Carrie Fisher, um, you know, Carlin returned, um, Carrie Fisher, the Harry Bush nun. Oh my mm -hmm. God! I, apparently, that she she said that she didn't want any Star Wars references in that. I heard that too. In that in that scene. Um, God, who else was in there? Chris, no, it wasn't Chris Rock. It was, uh, oh yeah, Chris Rock was in it. Um, uh, Will Ferrell was in it. Was that Will Ferrell? Yeah, Is well, yeah, Will Ferrell. It was he was yeah. shoot, he shot that at the same time he was shooting Zoolander. Terrible fucking movie. I can't stand that movie. Um, uh, you got Biggs, Jason Biggs, and uh, Vanderbeek. Um, Dude, fucking Shannon. There was Shannon. a lot in there. John oh Stewart God, was in was, it. What's that? John Stewart was in it. That's right. That's right. Wes Craven was in it as himself. Shannon yeah. Doherty again. Yep. Mark Hamill. Oh, that's right. Fucking Mark Hamill. That was just fucking gold. Judd Nelson was the sheriff. Oh, that's right. Yep. There was a lot of good stuff in it. And his uh, wife, this is her first. Whoops. This is her first time uh, appearing on screen. What? Do, let me ask you about this before we uh, before we keep talking about. How do you feel about 
him putting his family in these films. I don't see anything wrong with it. I think it's cool. I think it's kind of like a, I think Kevin, it, it never falls short on Kevin that he gets to do something pretty cool. So he, he wants to give the, pass that on to people he loves. You right. know, I, I never had a problem with it, but the, to, the only problem I had with Jay and Silent Bob, is, and I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm on the outside looking in on this, but Kevin's bits are legendary bits but it felt like that movie just was overloaded with bits. And right. that's why it's in the middle of my list. It's not at the end where, where I'm like, uh, I'll pass this. I still watch it and laugh, uh -huh. but I don't, ever, I don't ever find myself watching the whole movie all the way through. It, it just felt like an opening bit to a second bit to a third bit, which is legendary. They were great. But for me, it wasn't on the top half of my list. It was in the middle. It was the middle of the road. I, I thought overall, it was too much sizzle and not enough steak. Yeah, I could see that. And uh, of course, this film, this film haunts Ben Affleck to this day. Because what, really? of that, Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms. He hears no that way. everywhere he goes, somebody yells it and he fucking hates it. And <laughs> the, it, Kevin's talked about this on one of those DVDs. Um, but I interviewed Kevin for uh, the Red State when he was going on that tour promoting the Red State. And I'm like, so you're doing this hockey movie. Um, and I have, just just hear me out. So you put, you know, you know, being a hockey fan, you know, the, when the fights start at, the, you know, at a face-off, the guys are talking, then all of a sudden the gloves drop. He goes, you have one guy, it could be me, but or, or anybody else um, across from Affleck. And you go, dude, weren't you that guy in Phantoms? And because Kevin hates it so bad, he goes, fuck you. No, dude, you were the bomb. Fuck you. <laughs> and the puck drops and the gloves drop, and then boom, there they go. And he's like, he would never do it. He would never do it because he fucking hates that so bad. Was that the beef between him and Affleck for a while? <laughs> was no, it over no, I don't. I don't know what that was about. I got you. Well, I, I had no idea about that story. I, that totally just connected with me right now. That he may have gotten heckled over that. But I, I do say Kevin does not get enough credit for making Ben Affleck a star. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's my well, and Jason Lee. 100% Jason. I don't think there would be a My Name is Earl had Kevin Smith not ever put him in the movies. Yeah. Oh, you know he had a great – he had a – he had that great – oh, sorry, we're, that's the next movie. Never mind. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, he you know, coming back as Brody in this film and as Banky playing two characters, so I thought it was fucking gold. The one thing that Ben Affleck said, though, is when he uh, and Matt Damon got the Oscar for Best Screenwriter for the uh, – uh, yeah, Goodwill Hunting. Mm -hmm. He uh, said he always wanted to say thank you to Kevin Smith in his thank you speech, but he forgot Kevin in the in the speech. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see that. I mean, you know, but that's good. But yeah, I thought that was a. Uh, I remember seeing that a long, long time ago. Right, right. Well, I think one of my favorite scenes in there too is when they're. Um, chasing them through the studios and they walk into Goodwill Hunting too. You know, you know, Izzy, this, I could, you know what, I, I actually am very much looking forward to your role in Mallrats too, but, and we'll get to more of that later, how you potentially, maybe, possibly, allegedly, maybe cast in Mallrats too. But I personally, because I kind of know you now, I could probably see you in this style of movie I could see Kevin writing you as this kind of character. You would have complimented this kind of movie a hundred percent. That's yeah, the fact. You, totally me. Yeah, I, I see you in this movie all day long. And uh, if anybody's just joining us, what uh, what Ryan is um, referencing is I tweet at Kevin Smith every day to cast me in Twilight of the Mallrats. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. Hopefully after this video premieres. And I think I just did make. No, 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 never mind. Never mind. Never mind. We're not there yet. So, uh, yeah, but I, I love this film. It's a star-studded cast. Um, going to the chat room, 
Um, King Michael says, uh, lots of good bits and jokes and strike back, but the story itself is lame. I, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of fun. He agrees with me. He agrees with me. I'll take I'm gonna it. Say, kind of, I mean, I did, the story to me, the story didn't suck per se, but there was so much, like you were saying, there was so much stuff crammed into it. I right. mean, it could have been almost two movies, almost, but it was just like, take out a couple things and the movie would still have been good. Right. Not as cluttered. Right, right. So it just, I mean, the ending when he's walking off with uh, the monkey and all that, that one kind of went, what? But then again, it's Kevin Smith. It's his film. It, he does what it's, he wants. A, <laughs> it's a necessary film in his catalog to create the universe. He just made a complete movie about bits. And I know he was a Sam Kinison fan and that yeah. whole era of comedy. And, he, and Kevin always had these quick bits in his head. So I understand he needed to exercise that. And, and in my opinion, I think the little bits of comedy were great. And that's why I was saying to you, Izzy, I could see you in this kind of film because you, you pull off, you, you're, you're, to me, you're a character actor. You, you, yeah. you really do good characters. And this film actually had really great characters. It's just yeah. the storyline. It just felt like a lot of bits and not a lot of story. Right, right. Here's another one little tidbit that I don't know if every if people even noticed. Uh, it, if I, I believe the monkey's name was Suzanne. Yes. And that is actually the name of the Weezer song that is on the Mallrat Suzanne. soundtrack. Yep. That's right. all that I wanted of a girl. One of the Weezer songs I actually like. Uh, Jeffro Lee Ross says, I like how Early talked about My Name is Earl. I want to have a beer with Early Ray. Anytime, my friend. Anytime. I love it. Yeah, Joe, Joe says uh, they said the Affleck, uh, Affleck was the bomb again in the reboot. I can't remember that. I only saw it once. And I will get to the reboot um, in, in, a, in a minute here because we should move on. Um, do we want to talk about Jersey Girl? Is there any reason to talk about Jersey Girl other than the fact that J-Lo died and that was awesome? <laughs> Let's put it this way. As a fan... I appreciate what he tried to do. Yeah. I appreciate him giving it a shot. And I, I, I would be a hypocrite if I didn't say it's in my collection. I own the movie. Yep. If, it, if it's on, I watch it. But it's in the bottom half of my favorites yet. I, need to, I think I need to go back and watch <laughs> that again with a, with a fresh, clean mind. Because, you know, at that time, it's like, you know, all the, you know, all the dorks like us, you know, fucking hating on it. And I think I need to go. I I would I would look at this probably like the Peter Chris solo record of the <laughs> Kevin Smith films. You need to go back and listen to the Peter Chris solo record with an empty mind, not expecting to hear a Kiss record. Like you need to watch this film without expecting a Kevin Smith film. Mm -hmm. Right. That makes sense. Because I but remember Kevin, the, his the, fingerprints the, are on it, though. There there are a few pretty distinguishable fingerprints on it but you're right it's it to to the average person they would think it was just a hollywood you know movie that didn't quite reach it reach its mark but he actually had some easter eggs in that film that even still today surprise me it's still on the bottom end of my favorites earl right. did you, i i didn't mean to cut you off dude what 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 is your thoughts about the film to be honest i only saw it twice cuz i tried it and it's not a bad film But it's definitely on my bottom half. I mean, it was just one of those that I was expecting a little bit more from Kevin. And it, he just, in my opinion, kind of fell flat a little bit. Right. Okay. All right. And next he day. redeemed himself in the next one. <laughs> All right. And this is, uh, this is the reason that we have Earl on because Earl was, um, uh, tell, tell your connection and tell your story about Clerks 2. Well, when I was on the board, it was Jersey Girl was being made and done, and then he started doing Clerks 2. And one of the reasons why Clerks 2 was made was it was for uh, Jason Mewes, because he wanted to get off drugs and all that. And um, I'm going to sidetrack here, but it comes into a complete circle. One of the things that um, I don't know if you knew, uh, saw this, Ray, when you were on the board, was uh, all of a sudden, Kevin started writing about Jason Muse's drug addiction and how bad it was. A lot of people that. don't realize how bad it was yeah. until he wrote about it. And a lot of it was 
actually 100% of it was from the heart and what was going on around uh, with him and his friendship and the drug abuse that was going on. Um, it was a very stunning uh, story that, you know, you don't think about, you know, you know, you knew Jason did drugs, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But how bad it was. Right. I mean, he had his car re repossessed. He's uh, Kevin paid, I think it was like $30,000 for his seven days this stay at this one drug rehab. And he escaped the next day because you want to yeah. do more drugs and stuff like that. I mean, it was just all, all over that. And one of the things that Kevin had uh, said, if I remember correctly, was he told Jason that he would make clerks too if he could get out the drugs. And oh, he wow. Did. Well, and that's could, why. And that's why Clerks 2 was made. Well, if that's the case, you can tell it has a lot of heart because it's on the very top end of my list. This actually yeah. was my, my introduction to Kevin Smith. Again, shout out Joe Bergen over in England, my, my friend who's a famous tattoo artist. She drugged me to this movie because I was never properly introduced to the, to the Viewisk universe. And she told me to check it out. And it was one of those things where I loved it but I didn't get it all the way, but I got it just enough where I wanted to try it again. And I went back the next day and watched it by myself in the theater all along. And it went, I was like, I get it. The film is, I, I, it has a lot of heart and it's on the top half of my uh, favorite films by Kevin. How about you, Izzy? Um, I, I absolutely love this film. Uh, this movie um, had its moments that really hit home for me. Um, when, when they're driving to the, uh, to go, to go to the golf carts and that conversation that they have in the car, every time I see that, I start crying, you know, oh, yeah. you know, the one about you know, getting out and is this our life and blah, 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 blah. It's that, that fucking scene just fucking, oh, it just hits me every time. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's just that I, I, I thought the movie was great. I thought it was fucking great. You know, I love that they worked in a movies, you know, it was something different than the original clerks and, um, and how they tied it back into the original one, you know, but, you know, by reopening the, the quick stop, you know, and it just, it's, no, it's, that, weird. It, it's weird that, that a comedy, a, a, di a comedy about dick and fart jokes and, uh, <laughs> and ass to mouth, you know, touches somebody in, in such an emotional level. Mm -hmm. I, I think Clerks 2 had the most heart of any Kevin Smith film. And I think Earl, Earl summed it up perfect. I, I don't think I ever made that connection, but that would make sense. If, if Kevin wrote that from a place of trying to get his friend off drugs, I can see that heart because Izzy, I'm like you. If I'm by myself and I'm just hanging out and that, that part comes on, I, I always go like, man, it's like Rocky. It's like, man. Yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. just feel it, man. You just feel it. And I, I think it, Clerks 2 was my first Kevin Smith fan, film, and it's still on the top half of my uh, top, top echelon of my favorite Kevin Smith films. And I think Clerks 2 also was the start of him realizing he could do it on his own. And if right. you look, he, he participated in the Hollywood system for a little while after that. But starting yeah. with Clerk, Clerks 2, he, he started going, you know what? I already have my fan base. My right. fan base mm -hmm. is my fan. Yep. All all this money to this to this movie and still my fan base. I already have them. And yeah. I think that was I think that really opened the door for other movies that we'll get into later on. That you, that's going to be a good segue too. Is you were talking about the fan base, which uh, like on the board. I told this is easy earlier, but there was a lot of the jokes, especially in the beginning, that when they're talking back and forth, like in the restaurant and all that, that were actually loosely based on some of the stuff that was going on in, on the actual view rescue board. I never knew that. That's and awesome. it, it's, it's just like, you, you, you have to know it. Like if you were, I was really heavy into this board. I mean, I knew a lot of, a lot of my friends were on there and even a couple of my friends that, was, that we, that I still talk to to this day were from the board. And there was one guy that he was in a wheelchair and all this other stuff. And he talked about going, Hey, with uh, 
or that was what's his name. I just lost it and how all the stuff was going on because there was a lot of stuff that was going on the board that he put on the screen. Like uh, all that stuff on there. I mean, all these jokes and all these little in things <laughs> that I was just like, oh my God, this is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, why, that's why he has his fan base. That's exactly. exactly. And this one was made for his fans too. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Mean, there's totally. so much in there, like like a lot of the end jokes, like if you weren't on the board or knew him kind of personally or whatever, you wouldn't have gotten it. There's, right. There was a lot of that in there. I think well, my, there's my, a lot favorite, my favorite line in the whole movie was uh, sex hungry and retard strong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? Uh, Clerks, too, I think, showcased his ability to write bits perfectly. Like in movies, the little bits played in the, in the, into the storyline, right. as opposed to Jay and Silent Bob, where I felt like the bits were just on top of bits. There, were just, it just, it, there was a beginning and end, no middle. Clerks was the perfect display of Kevin kind of flexing his ability to tell a story, but tell a joke. It, you know, now I'm finding out through Earl, tell an inside joke on top of that. Right. So I, Clerks, I, I have a lot of praise for Clerks. Some of the other movies, you're going to say this, I am a Kevin Smith dick writer, but I'm definitely going to get a little critical a little bit later. So, but Clerks 2, the Clerks 2 is top of the list for me. One thing real quick, this is actually when, uh, what I actually kind of saw this in a sneak preview, like a week before it was released. And this is my first time I ever had any, any interaction with Kevin on a personal level because he actually uh, said on the board, Earl, how was it? Da, 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 da. Were the people laughing? How, what, what scenes were they laughing at? And how was this scene and all that? How were the, I mean, he was asking me all these questions about it. I'm like, the movie was great. People laughed. Yep. There were two old people that left because we told them, this is not a movie for you. And they were right. They left. <laughs> <laughs> Because we were looking at him, and I'm going, "Oh God!" You, you should have saw the you should have saw the audience I was in for Tusk. See how many of those people survived. <laughs> I have not seen Tusk. I'm not going to lie. Oh no, we're not going to be able to have a full uh, Earl. I know you've seen it. We'll be able to talk about it. We have to touch on Tusk. Okay, we can touch we can touch on Tusk. Um, but yeah, I I fucking love this film, dude. The Star Wars fucking uh, the, the Star Wars Lord of the Rings gimmick was hilarious especially being a star wars nerd like i am um porch monkey <laughs> yeah the porch monkey bit um the jason lee character it, oh god oh <laughs> <laughs> what was his <laughs> pickle fucker <laughs> pickle fucker yeah. and, and there's one line that from that movie that i actually always use to this day in general dialogue I mean, it's always, uh, you know, better cross your fingers. Better cross dicks, too. <laughs> well, tell, tell me this. I think you both would be lying if you said you didn't leave that movie without a crush on Rosario Dawson. Because she oh, was, God. was always sexy. Gosh, oh, she God. was crushing. She crushed it in that film. I, I, wanted, I didn't even know where I wanted to marry her. And back, and back there, the one thing I heard when the film was being made, Jason's uh, muse said that uh, he went up to her and said, you know, that naked scene that you were in in, uh, um, oh, God, that movie, Alexandria, I think it was. Um, which I guess she's like full on nude or at least topless. He's like, I jerked off to that every day. <laughs> and told that to her, to her. And I'm just like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Lori's uh, yelling at me from Australia, saying Vegemite, Vegemite, Vegemite. it's coming up, brother. Vegemite. It's coming up. Uh, Joe says pass. Uh, <laughs> Brandon says you skipped Clerks animated series. Like, eh. Um, Actually, I enjoyed that series. Yeah, it was. It was I, I liked it, but I mean, unfortunately, like Kevin said, and on the board, when they announced when it was going to be scheduled, they killed it on purpose. Yeah, because there was no ratings, no nothing. And it was killed automatically. Yeah. Uh, Joe says, Porch Monkey for Life. I'm taking it back. <laughs> it was just gold. Uh, King Michael. Clerks 2 had oddball Kevin Smith humor that seemed like he was trying to push the envelope a little bit. I expected it to follow in the tone of the original, so I ended up disappointed. I can okay. see it. To a That's point, fair. But yeah. I don't know. It's, for me, I had a more of a connection to it because I saw what was going on on the boards and what was going on with the filming. So I had, I was, you know, I saw what was going on. So I maybe, I'm more fanboy with this film than most of the. Yeah. Films. 
Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I love this film. I absolutely love this film. All right. Let's talk about the Jay and Silent Bob reboot for a second before we go to break. And uh, when we get back from the break, we will play the video and I will try the Vegemite, uh, Vegemite uh, crispy sandwich, whatever the fuck they call it. Oh God, I'm not looking forward to this at all. Um, <laughs> thoughts on the reboot, the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Earl, take the floor. I had a hard time with it. Really? I thought there was too much fan service, way too much. A lot of too much revisiting too. Yeah. Um, this one, I could actually say he tried too hard. He tried to do a lot of things that he wanted to do, but it was too hard. I mean, he, he, it was just, it fell flat. And by even quarter way through the film, I was just like, what is this? It just felt like he was trying to do something that was funny because the guy took his names, but it was just, it just didn't feel right to me. And a, a lot, it was in a lot of it was fan service. Yes, I laughed, but I didn't like it. And I hate to say that about his films. I know, I know, I know. But we have to be critical and, and admit which ones we don't like. And I, you know what, Izzy, this is a good conversation with Earl and I because that's actually one of my favorite films. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually one of my favorite films. It's not in my top three or top five even, but I thought, I thought you could see when artists is just being themselves and not giving a fuck. Like yeah. they just, they're just writing what they want to write with the people they want to write it for. It felt like that. And I think Earl and I have a reverse feeling about Jay and Silent Bob. For Earl, he just didn't connect with the story on this one. I did. I felt, I felt for, for some reason, Jay and Silent Bob was a ton of bits. I see Earl's point about the story in the reboot, but it was enough bits to keep me interested in laughing. But there was enough, a little bit of a storyline. And I think ultimately in the end, he wanted to put his kid in, into the story in that way that's kind of how it felt you know yeah and yeah. It, it, i mean it, it, you're you you're probably we're probably you're right about that because for me as i've seen his other movies and some somebody went in there and saw this one without seeing the other ones they could say oh that movie was great but you saw a lot of these tidbits already in the other films yeah some of the uh, little repeating jokes going to the uh, chat room king michael says uh king michael's very very hard on these films but I think he still loves them all at the same time. Perhaps it was naive to expect Clerks 2 to follow, um, to follow the original Clerks. Reboot felt like Strikes Back. Another wacky story full of in-jokes mocking the reboot industry while doing a reboot. Uh, Brandon says, try too hard, question uh, mark. Laughing my ass off. He literally made the exact same movie. Couldn't have been more lazy. And you can't complain about there being no substance in Strikes Back and then complain about the reboot because it has a lot of story. Then he also says the reboot kicks ass. Uh, Jeff Rose, Jeff Ro Lee Ross says, haven't watched it yet. Speak Earl. Um, mm. And then King Michael also says the fact that the reboot was for the audience and not made as a theatrical release made sense, I suppose. Yeah. I can't disagree with that. Um, yeah. Hold on. I'm, I'm ordering the toast for the, uh, for the Vegemite sandwich. The one thing <laughs> else kind of, <laughs> The one thing I will say that kind of turned me off about what Kevin was doing with Jay and Silent Bob's uh, uh, reboot was the fact that he uh, was going around in certain cities, you know, showing it off and all. You need to watch it for like 40 bucks. Yep. But the one thing going, hey, I got that picture with him. Maybe I could get it autographed or whatever since I was a, uh, a boardy. And come to see it, it's $700 to meet wow. Kevin and Jason. I was just like, are you kidding me? Most of us fans don't even have that much in our bank account. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's a great point. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the slippery slope, and Izzy, you could probably back me up on this, is Kevin probably sold the rights to that to another company to be able to make Reboot, and he'd had no control over how much they charge. We see that all the time in the music business. Yeah, I can see and, that. Because I, I can't see Kevin ever going, I'm going to put $700 price tag on taking a picture with us. I just don't see it. That's yeah. just, but I, but I agree with you. 
hundred percent. He knows his fan base doesn't have 700 bucks. So his fan base relates to people that works behind the counter and clerks. So yeah. he knows that, but I feel, cause I saw that same thing. I, and I, I was disappointed and I, I watched it on video on demand. I didn't go pay the money because it just felt like somebody was trying to take advantage of his fan base. It felt that way. So I, I get those feelings. I a hundred percent get it. My, my thoughts on the movie. Um, I, I had a very hard time watching this film and it's not that it was bad um it is because of personal stuff um the the whole story about jay finding him you know finding the daughter that he didn't know that he had um i found myself in tears for half of the movie because i'd never met my dad and that's why i had such a hard time watching because i i was just bawling i mean i was literally bawling watching this movie you know seeing the whole reconnection with the daughter and the, I'm like, I've never met my dad. Kevin, Kevin has a way of trauma bonding with his audience. I know that's a weird say, way of saying it, but he has a way of reaching in and connecting with you in that place that you don't really want to connect, but you get there. And I see that is he, I think that's a good comparison. I, I, I could see you being connected in that way. I think that's a really that's deep, and that's kind of why all of us kind of nerds dig Kevin Smith movies. Is we connect in something in that in that in that way with him. Mm -hmm. I yeah, can see uh, that. Let's see uh, if 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 you didn't go to the reboot road show, it takes away from the experience. I I get it. You know, it was the same thing with the uh, um, with the Red State. That you know how he how he took it on tour to you know make the money because he did it all himself. I, I thought that was fucking brilliant. Uh, Jeff Rory Ross says, let's all take a shot as Izzy eats that grody bite witch. <laughs> Powering up with a refresh shot now. Whoa, Izzy going to puke live on the air. Oh, don't, don't say that. <laughs> do a shot at Jack. Jack I may have to do that after I take the bite to get that taste out of my mouth that I am not looking forward to trying. Uh, Lori's like, just think bitter. Like, oh, great. I, I can't wait. I'm so excited for this. Um, oh, here's what we are going to do. We are going to take a short two minute break. Uh, we will come back and I will play the video. I will intro the video. Um, and then uh, after the video of me begging Kevin Smith with that special cameo, thank you, Joe Regan. Um, we will eat the sandwich. Or actually, I'll at least take a bite of the sandwich. I'll at least take a bite of the sandwich because I have a feeling I'm not going to want to eat the whole goddamn thing. Izzy, how bad do you want to be in Mall Rats 2? Is what uh, I mean. Like I said, I will do <laughs> it. So, all right, we're going to take a short break. Earl Bickle, Ray and Belshare. My name is Izzy Presley. This is another fucking podcast. View a skew review. Rockwood Saloon Authentic Apparel takes rock and roll fashion to a new level with their tees and tanks for men and women. They also make custom shirts, jackets, vests, pants, hoodies, beanies, and more. The Rockwood Graphics Department can design anything from your logo, t-shirt design, promo posters, band swag, and printed at great prices. From tour shirts and custom stage gear to killer threads from the street to the stage, Rockwood Saloon has it all. Rockwood Saloon, authentic rock and roll apparel for stage and street. World Tour tested for quality, comfort, style, and durability. Check them out at www.rockwoodsaloon.com. That's rockwoodsaloon.com. If you need to promote your band or business or just want to stylize, personalize, or customize your ride, check out vid-decals.com. Want to create and customize your own stickers representing your band or make your own bumper sticker? Vid Decals can do it. All stickers are printed on quality vinyl and can be placed on any flat surface. Stickers are an affordable way to promote your band or business. Go to vid-decals.com to get started. That's vid-decals.com. Vid-decals.com. Retro Arcade brings Minnesota and surrounding areas arcade games from the days gone by. All of those great games from pizza joints and arcades are available in cocktail units and custom machines. Dozens of favorites from your youth in one machine to complete your game room or man cave. Retro Arcade also sells and services your favorite pinball machines. Find them at Facebook.com slash 80 Arcade. That's Facebook.com slash 80 Arcade. Retro Arcade, your youth is just one click away. Hey, what's going on? This is Tom Arnold. I like uh, fat women and cocaine. And you're listening to Izzy Presley here on another uh, fucking podcast. And uh, I know Izzy 
uh, from Cocaine Anonymous meetings. I've actually uh, seen him at the meetings with uh, uh, Ace Havad Johnson from, uh, I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but Ace has got a bad Coke problem. And uh, his sponsor is uh, is uh, Josh Todd from, and again, I shouldn't say this out loud, but Josh is his sponsor for Buck Cherry. He's addicted to upskirt porn. And, uh, and they're both being sponsored by the Eagles. The, uh, the whole band, the Eagles. There's, anyways, uh, another fucking podcast right here with Izzy Presley. And uh, call uh, your sponsor. So a. here it is. Uh, this is the video. Um, you will obviously only hear the audio of this. Um, hold on. I'm going to mute these two guys. So when they come back, we do not hear them talking. Um, I have to make sure that channel is unmuted for you guys. So. As you all know, I've been tweeting at that Kevin Smith, our Kevin Smith. Yes, at that Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, every day, basically every day, to, to uh, cast me in Twilight of the Mall Rats. Um, I did something special as my final hurrah. This is my Hogan leg drop. This is my closer. This is my main eventer. Um, there's a special cameo in this video. Um, from somebody that we all know and love as dorks um, as my final plea and uh, the four minute and 30 second intro getting up to that is me basically doing a cactus jack impression from his ecw days so without further ado oh laurie's son that's funny laurie's i think that was silent sound bob's ads all right here we go without further ado here is the final plea to kevin smith hi kevin it's your pal lizzie presley here you know the guy that tweets at you every day get you to cast him in twilight and the mall rats that's me how you doing kev i sit here with no script in front of me. I sit here talking to you from the heart, off the top of my Thornton Millen. I could sit here and recreate scenes from your amazing films, or I could just quote them like Burt Reynolds and shit, but that's not gonna happen. You see, Kev, my entire life, I've had delusions of grandeur. Hell, it might even be my middle name. But those delusions of grandeur have paid off. You see, they have gotten me places. They got me as a host on the Monsters of Rock Cruise. They got my band on the Monsters of Rock Cruise that has members of LA Guns and Faster Pussycat bands that I've idolized my entire life. They got me doing stand-up comedy, opening up for Chips Enough Sweating, and the greats like Don Jameson and Craig Gass. Hell, they even got me an interview with you. You're doing press for the Red State, and you promised old Iz here that you'd cast him as a skater. You'd put him in that hockey movie. That never happened. But I'm here. I'm in beautiful downtown Burbank, waiting on that call. Now, Kev, I understand that tweeting at you every day is probably not going to do it. But I will say this, you are a great mind. Well, it's my belief that you made Ben Affleck and Jason Lee stars. And you could do that for old Izzy here, too. You might see me and go, you know what? This kid's good. I want to keep putting him in my movies. Hell, maybe somebody else will see me and I'll land my dream role in Days of Our Lives. Maybe a date with the beautiful and talented Heather Graham. God bless you, roller girl. Or hell, maybe you won't be impressed. Maybe you'll ask yourself, why did I put this failed experiment in human sociology in one of my films and waste my time? But you don't know until you try, do you, Kevin? So I decided 
that this is my last hurrah. I decided this is my last shot. I am no longer going to tweet at you every day because I think this video will be enough. And if you're listening to the podcast or you're watching the podcast on YouTube, you will see or hear me try Vegemite for the very first time just to prove to you that I will do anything. But I felt like I needed to call in a friend. I needed to call in someone that you know that you respect and you love to help you get convinced. I had to call in somebody that is a star. A much bigger star than I. Obviously, you know that. Because, Kevin, I know tweeting at you every day isn't going to do it. But I wonder... I just wonder if Lando Calrissian can. Hi, Kevin. I think you should cast Izzy for Mallrats, too, honestly. Just because of how funny and talented he is. Also, not to mention the fact that uh, he paid me to say that. He got here before you did. I had no choice. That Billy D. Williams is a smart guy. Help me, Obi Kev Kenobi. You're my only hope. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is the moment of truth. And after uh, after this moment of truth, after this uh, Vegemite tasting, um, we'll talk about. Uh, we, we should talk about Red State a little bit because that movie I really fucking dug it. Um, but I know Lori's been waiting for this. Lori's the one that. Uh, that, that sent me this Vegemite. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I got my butter because this is how you're supposed to do it. Yeah. Butter. All right. And uh, this has been sitting in my room, so it is at room temperature. So there's going to be a lot of butter on this thing. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, did I get fucking... Oh, no. See, I made this even grosser. I accidentally bought wheat bread. Oh. I suppose if it's going to be gross, I may as well make it even grosser, right? Uh, uh, all right. Vegemite. This is a Vegemite chippy sandwich, or a chippy Vegemite sandwich, however the fuck they say it there. And this is the Vegemite. Just so you guys in uh, video land, when you see this, see this is an absolute real thing. This is unopened. This is going to be my first smell of it. I don't know if I even want to smell it, but I think I'm going to have to. And I think Lori said, you don't have to put a whole lot of it on there. Oh, the drum roll. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Let me get, make sure to get the drum roll into uh, the thing because the drum, this is obviously me. Um, me stalling <laughs> all right let's see sound bites drum roll okay uh, drum roll and symbol there we go okay i'm scared <sighs> here we go opening the vegemite the hell did I do this? Why do I do this shit to myself? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the Vegemite is opened. How's it smell? It 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 doesn't smell terrible. Okay. It it, it smells like um. I don't know how to describe it. Okay. Here it is. See, there's actually Vegemite on this. Okay. Mix it in with the butter. Oh. 
I'm going to put more butter on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to back out. I'm not backing out. Or he said he wouldn't sniff it, but uh, Jeff Rose says I've smelt this and denied it. I'm just going to put a little bit more butter on top of it. Obviously, if nothing else, this will be a great the Vegemite, Vegemite is on here, and then I'm not going to totally cover it up. It's still going to get mixed in. So it's like a Vegemite paste now. That it is a paste. And I'm not going to lick the knife because I don't want to fucking ruin this. All right, now the chippy part. Classic ways. Apparently, the salt and vinegar is the best way, but uh, Lori said you just use the regular salted chips. Putting the chips on the sandwich now. All right. Chips are on the sandwich. I'm going to have a chip right now just because. I forgot how good regular chips are. Um, oh, I know what I need to do. Oh, no. I got Vegemite in my butter. <laughs> okay. This is going to make a great reaction video, Izzy. Yes, it is. <laughs> this is great. Okay, so make sure to take – I'm going to put a little butter on the other uh, the other half of the bread because, you know, it should be buttered. It should all be buttered. <laughs> this is not me. This is not me trying to change the taste of it. This is just me being a human and putting fucking butter on his bread, on his toast. Okay. Here we go. You see, Kev, this is the kind of stuff that I would do to get cast in your movie. And I feel like I have to be Cactus Jack again. To stomach doing this for you because I care and I want to be a star. Bang, bang. Oh, here we go. Ah. How do you eat this shit? <laughs> Honestly. How do you get, just so you see, I did take a bite. How do you eat this shit? Oh my God. <laughs> Lori, what the fuck? What is wrong with you people down under? This is like, this is like a wall of hot garbage in my mouth. This is, no, I'm not going to puke. He's going to, he's going to. My, my he's God, gonna... he's going to puke. My God, <laughs> my God. Kevin, this is the stuff that I do. This is the stuff that to, just to prove to you that I am hardcore. And no, I'm not going to spit it out like a fucking pussy. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. My God! Oh, no. No, Lori! No! <laughs> yeah, look, this, is, this is what I, I, I need to... Oh, oh. Oh. Mm, mm. I just ate a knife full of butter. Mm, mm, mm. Holy shit, Lori! What the fuck? Oh. Vegemite reaction. <laughs> Vegemite reaction. I'm gonna Earl, what do you think? Earl, Earl, you being probably the, out of the three of us the closest to the situation. Could Izzy have done any more to be cast in Mall Rats 2? I don't think so. <laughs> any any Vegemite. <laughs> oh. I think I proved my point. <laughs> I think I, I think you're in. I, I'm going to go ahead and say you're going to be in Mallrats too. That's happening. Kevin will see this somehow, and he will be impressed. The Lando cameo. It just that was a three pointer, and then you went to half court with the Vegemite, and you synced it. 
That was, I, will, uh, I will protest Mall. I will say right now on record, I will protest Mall Rats too if Kevin Smith does not cast Izzy motherfucking Presley. <laughs> Lori says, I'm pissing myself. <laughs> um, Jeff <laughs> Roth, Izzy, you are Ameri an American poontang man, a real American. <laughs> Does that mean, hold on, does that mean that I am a, hold on, hold on, hold on. Does that mean that I am a, why is there no audio? Why is, let me tell you something, brother. That's right, baby. I'm picking up the strap. Let me tell you something, brother. I ain't the Benjamite, brother. I got Lando Calrissian, brother. Now, put me in the goddamn movie. I got the strap. Make me a star, brother. All right, anyways. Sorry. I got excited. And <laughs> there it is. There it is. Oh, my God. All right. I'm gonna do a shot now to get that fucking taste out of my mouth. Cheers. Lori, go fuck yourself. And uh, play this just for you, Lori. Fucking Ward. Wayne fucking Ward. Oh! All right, so, moving on with business. Um, let us touch on the Red State. Uh, Earl, you have not seen the Red State? No. Let me let me let me throw out a shock bomb on you guys. It's not my favorite Kevin Smith movie, but I think it's absolutely hands down the best Kevin Smith movie. Michael Parks delivers a performance. It's absolutely the the best directing Kevin's ever done in his life. He was he shot action like he was shooting a Die Hard movie, and in my opinion, the film took a chance that a lot of people wouldn't have taken and took an, taken a shot at, at a group that a lot of people wouldn't have taken a shot at. Right. And I think overall, if you just looked at it from a filmmaker point of view, I think Red State is his best film. And I, I, Earl, I encourage you to watch it, unless you have an issue with it. No, I don't really have an issue with it. I was just, at that time when the film was released, I was going through some things and that movie wouldn't have done well with me. Gotcha. So it's just one of those. And honestly, I've forgotten about that film. But no, cool. I will be watching it now because I've been reading about a lot of the uh, the religious psychopaths, if you know what to call it, if you want to call it like Jim Jones, stuff like those guys. Yeah. Like that. And it's well, just in the beginning. I hate to cut you off for the nerd for the nerd in you. I don't know if Kevin Smith, if it was parallel thinking or if he meant to do it, but he basically rewrote the beginning of Porky's. That's how he started this film off. Oh and if my anybody, God, you're right. Yes, it's the beginning of Porky's. You are right. Wow. And see, uh, I this is the this is the film that I got to interview Kevin for, and this is I was very young in my in my um, interviewing career. So it was a scripted interview and, you know, with Kevin, I guess it doesn't really matter too much because, you know, he, he's such a great talker that, you know, he can just fucking roll with it. But you can tell when I was doing the interview, um, even in print that it was, there was no follow up on his answers. It was just one question, one question, one question. And actually one of the cool things that I did is uh, we, we did the uh, inside the actor's studio, five questions at the end. And uh, I, I, I got to see if I can find that somewhere because it was, it was pretty fucking hilarious seeing his, you know, his answers to that question. But so I was able to go down to the show in Minneapolis. Yeah, it was in Minneapolis. Or was it was in St. Paul. I think it was in Minneapolis. No, it was in Minneapolis. Um, so I got to watch it at the theater, you know, and then he did the Q&A afterwards. And that's when I got to meet him. Um, and I, I love this fucking film. I, I absolutely love it. John Goodman was amazing. It's so, so good. Pollock. So ah, good. So yeah. Good. If, you, if you guys haven't seen this film, you need, you really, really, really need to see the red state. It is, it is fucking amazing. But I mean, it's one of those things you can't, 
you can't look at it thinking that you're going to see a Kevin Smith film. You just look at it, you're going to see a really good fucking movie. Yeah. I, 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 if you ask me, I think that was Kevin, Kevin's mic drop was Red State. And I think everything since has been just him just wanting to do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. It, it, I think Red State was him saying, I can shoot action. I can tell a story. I can make a profound leading actor into somebody you love and somebody you hate, somebody you want to die, somebody, you, you know, that you hate. It, it's just he really pulled a, a lot of emotion out. I, I, I will argue that it's not a U.S. Universe film. It's just a great, no, it's great it's a great film. I think it's his best movie. Yeah. I mean, do we want to touch on the other films? Um, like I never saw yeah. Zach and Miri make a porno. That um, one was funny. I never saw fucking, uh, I never saw cop out. I never saw Tusk. I, I never saw yoga, yoga hosers. And, uh, yep. there's one, one coming out next year called Kilroy was here. I, I'll say this Tusk was was really really great to people that really understood like Hitchcock Twilight Zone it was like an episode of the, of the Twilight Zone stretched out over the course of a movie okay and you know a lot of people hate on the film it's in it's in it's in my top five only because I think it's kind of it's, it's it was really cool and really creative and plus he shot most of it here in Charlotte, North Carolina, home of the nature boy, Ric Flair. Uh, then but, you have uh, to say it, but Ray, and you have to say it correctly. Charlotte, woo, woo. North Carolina. <laughs> anyway, sorry, <laughs> continue. You're right, but, but Tuss to me was, was, was him showing he could do horror, but do it in a way that he knew going into this, this is not a commercial film. This is film is going to. I went into I went to see it at the theater, and they were able to advertise this movie as being some artsy horror film in this art 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 house in Charlotte. There was probably twenty five people in the theater. By the time the movie ended, there were six. Wow. Yeah, it, it's a movie that you either really get and really like, or you just you just don't get it. It's like Jay and Silent Bob to me, you know. Mm -hmm. But I liked it. I I, I really dug it. I, I dug the Hitchcock kind of chance he took with it. Hmm. Earl. No, I personally haven't seen it yet. Um, I wasn't sure to, if I should watch it because it was one of those that, you know, like you said, he, he did something completely awesome. He made a horror film. Right. And I remember Harlan calling me up and he's like, dude, I just saw Tusk. Your guy is a fucked up person. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get it like going, Okay. <laughs> Kevin Kevin Smith has a Sam Kinison sense of humor, big time, and and he he will he will create a line that doesn't exist, and he did that with Tusk. It, it, I watch people leave there, literally saying, "What the fuck are you you guys watching?" Like uh -huh. literally, like. But for me, it's in my top five. It, it's actually fifth on my list of favorite Kevin Smith movies. Now, now, keep in mind when we do this, when we do our list, uh, let, let's just keep it to the uh, the Jersey ones. Um, All right, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, just just to make it easier, because I mean, like he's he's done a lot of films, but uh, I think the Jersey ones that's the best. Uh, that that's the easiest way to do it, because that you know those are the ones that we also know him best for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. All right, and I'm actually I I'm wait I waited until right now to put mine in order. Because I wanted to have this conversation first before I decided. Because it's like I, I love each film on a different level for different reasons. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right. So I am doing my list right now. And let's see. Let's go that. Let's this is a this is fantastic radio, by the way. <laughs> um Oh, Jesus. See, now this is where it gets tough. Holy shit. Oh, let's have to do... Oh, my God. Oh, God damn it. What am I doing to myself? Uh, okay, strike. And two. All right. Boom. Earl? What? 
Give us your list. I'm making it. Ran, give right. us your list. I'll, I'll give you a little wrestling promo and a little plug for myself. Kevin Smith. Do. I'm, I am a Kevin Smith nut swinger, but I also am a fair Kevin Smith fan. I was actually at Quick Stop last week. And I just to take a photo for you, Izzy, to try to get you in Mall Rats 2, which I will boycott if you're not in. But Clerks X, this DVD had a documentary on it called Snowball Effect 12, 13 years ago, which inspired me, which I don't know if this is a compliment to Kevin or not, just a regular dude to say, I can make a movie too. And I went out and made Nito Mosquito, which is a quirky, weird movie in the vein oh, wow. of Kevin Smith. You can find it on YouTube. It was a, it's a 90-minute feature-length film, but it was completely inspired by Kevin. So I'm a complete Kevin Smith nerd. Uh, Kevin, if you're watching this ever, thank you for all the inspiration. And you can watch Nito Mosquito on YouTube right now absolutely free of charge. But my list, Clark's 2, number one. It's my favorite Kevin Smith film, hands down. Number two, Mall Rats. Number three, Clerks. Number four, Chasing Amy. Number five, Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. Then number six, I would say Jay and Silent Bob, the original. And number seven, coming in last, would be Dogma. Oh, shit! I freaking forgot Dogma! So you didn't put Jersey Girl on there? I don't really know if I consider that part of the real... Yeah, that's a good universe. point. Okay, so I'm going to cross that off. Um... Oh man, yeah, okay. Um, let's uh, here's King Michael. Oh, actually, first, uh, Jeff Lee Roth says, Early, please come play Dallas. Love your jams and sibilities. You are awesome. Um, Cheers. King Michael, Cheers. love Dallas. King Michael, number seven, the reboot, number six, Mall Rats, number five, Clerks 2, number four, Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, number three, Dogma. And it looks like he has Chasing Amy and Clerks both at number one. So I think he tied those two. Okay, fair. Uh, I'm ready whenever you are. Go for it. Okay, for number seven, I got the reboot. Sorry, that was Jane, Stalin's, Jane Silent Bob Strike Back at number six. Chasing Amy at number five. Mall Rats at number four. Number three is Dogma. Number two is Clerks. And number one is Clerks 2. All right. And mine, uh, at number seven, uh, like I said, the reboot, I think that's an easy way to uh, – everybody probably figured that out. Uh, and like I said, it, none of these movies are bad. It's just this is by our order of how we like them. Um, number six, I have Clerks. Number five, I have Dogma. Number four, I have Mall Rats. Number three, I have Chasing Amy. At number two, I have Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. And at number one, Clerks 2. So we are all in agreement that Clerks 2 is our favorite Kevin Smith film. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. So you Kevin Smith nerds out there on the universe of YouTube that's going to be watching that, argue with us <laughs> why Clerks 2 is not it his best film. You know what's really sad, and I'm really pissing myself for this, is um, when I first moved here, I lived in Highland Park for, I lived in Highland Park for about three years, and in <laughs> Highland Park is the police museum, and inside that police museum is where they filmed the jail cell scene for Clerks 2. No shit. Really? And I never went to that fucking police museum. Uh, I know that uh, there was a Burger King somewhere in LA. I forgot where it was exactly that they used for movies before it got uh, torn down. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was out near the uh, Back to the Future Mall, I think. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And I know the track is somewhere around that area too, if I remember correctly too. But I'm trying to think of anything else. Oh, and the uh, guy that was uh, doing the donkey. If yeah. I remember correctly, he was the film director for the uh, the actual guy who was doing all the filming for the clerk for the actual film. Oh wow! Yeah, nice. he was actually at the uh, 
uh, 37th birthday party, and he was actually filming stuff uh, at the birthday party that was supposed to go on the DVD, but never made it. Another one of my favorite lines from that movie is just such a quick snippet where he's fucking monkey. He goes, ooh, cake. <laughs> well, if, Izzy, let me ask you this. If, if, if Kevin is on the fence, if he's watching this and he's on the fence and he goes, I want to know what Izzy Presley's will not do list is, what is your top three you will not do to be a mall rat? Uh, gay porn, um, gay porn, and gay porn. So you have one do not do list, but would you, and Kevin would appreciate this conversation, would you reenact gay porn? I'd take a shot in the mouth, you know, on principle, because <laughs> um, that's how you get ahead in Hollywood, right? There you go. You, know, you got to go. play, <sighs> to be the man, you got to beat the man. And you got to play the game, baby. Woo. <laughs> or would that be the, to be the man, you got to beat off the man? <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty sure you eating Vegemite and getting Lando Calrissian seals the deal of anything. And I, I, I want to push again. I think you'd be great in Mallrats too, Kevin. Cast Thank Izzy. You. Thank you. All right, let's I'm in do agreement. this. Um, uh, so... At the end of the show, I usually have the uh, the outro is the Black Diamond live outro, um, and I've been doing this I've been doing this a couple times, but because this is a Jersey based conversation, and this song would actually fit in Twilight of the Mall Rats really well, that I'm gonna play the cover of uh, of um, 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 Tender Years, Smitty and the Cruisers. I think that would fit in Twilight of the Mall Rats, but before we get there, um, Ray, people want to buy that film. Are they able to buy the DVD or do you, is it just up yeah. on YouTube? It's on YouTube. You can get DVDs on eBay uh, for a while. They were on Amazon, but um, they haven't been on Amazon for a while. I'm starting to run low on copies because DVDs aren't exactly uh, in fashion these days. I'll buy a but copy of it. <laughs> I will send you a copy. Is he? But no, this fuck film, that, we, man. You bought a t-shirt. I can buy a fucking copy of that. But, but we made it in 2010, 10 years ago, but it's a little quirky movie, but it was completely inspired by Kevin. Uh, if you guys want to give it a shot, who's watching, who are watching this, Nito Mosquito. And look at this. We completely ripped off 40-year-old virgin cover. Oh, it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Complete, it's a complete, uh, it's the silly movie, but it's, it's free to watch. It's worth every penny you pay to watch it on YouTube. Nito Mosquito. I also have a band called Early Ray. We have a new single out called Apple Pie, which is a reimagined version of the Warrant hair metal classic Cherry Pie a video that's got Bobby Brown from, uh, from the original Cherry Pie in it. And we got CDs out, out on Amazon and eBay as well and uh, streaming everywhere. Early Ray. Love it. I love it. And people want to find you on uh, the Twitter machine? on all the social media early Ray. Right. And uh, well, what's your other, uh, your other Instagram so people know, because you, there's going to be a lot of nerds listening to this and they're going to love this. I have a pop culture recreation site where I go to movie locations or places that are famous, like the Bur Burger King, which I give credit for starting this whole hobby, like the Burger King. And I think in Burbank where Michael J. Fox comes out of at the beginning of back to the future. I like, I go to places like that and I take photos and I, I size them up to the original. It's called Nerd Locations uh, on Instagram mainly. I have, I have the handle on everything, but Instagram is where I really post. So for all you nerds that like movie history and pop culture history, Nerd Locations on yeah. Instagram. That's fucking great. Earl, do you have anything to promote? None really. No, just I'm a boring. fanboy. Just a fanboy <laughs> that has a connection. Yeah, just a fanboy that enjoys, you know, good movies. I mean, fanboy. Fanboys was a good film. Just saying. Yeah. I think we might be watching that this evening. Because I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I've only seen the trailer. And I'm rather excited for it. Uh, it's actually really good. Uh, going back to the chat room really quick. King Michael says, I guess I got to watch Clerks 2 one more time, but I won't love it. Uh, yeah, you, you might. Uh, Jeff Roll Lee Ross says, best podcast ever. Wow. That's, uh, I'll, I'll take that compliment. Yeah. All right. Like, uh, Mr. Fucking Ray and Bell share from Early Ray. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Uh, Here. Earl Bickle, 
Thank you, man. I appreciate it as well. Thank you guys for listening. Make sure you guys do hit up all the social media at Real Lizzie Presley all the way across the board. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And of course, the show page is another effing podcast. If you want to donate, I forgot to tell you this at the top of the show, Izzy Presley at yahoo.com is your PayPal. Please make sure you're sending money to a friend and not saying you're purchasing goods because that way I get all the money. Um, I also accept uh, Venmo at Real Izzy Presley, Cash App, dollar sign Izzy Presley, carrier pigeon smoke signal uh big buckets of cash whatever you want to do but please uh if you like what i do please support the show and uh sometimes i'm able to send you some shit buy the shirts the link is there and all right like i said no show next week because i will be in minnesota and uh probably for the next two weeks but uh make sure you subscribe to that youtube channel so you can you know watch the video of me eating the fucking Vegemite, Lori, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and uh, see the video for the uh, with Lando Calrissian in it and all that shit. And uh, all right, so we're going to end with this. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a cover from Izzy and the Strikers. That was a dramatic pause. Doing the classic from Eddie and the Cruisers, Tender Years.